What's up everyone, it's Derp here with another video about the Nexon vs. Iron Mace court battle. Today I wanted to go over the timeline for the court case and what we can expect from that. Uh, before I start out, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching my videos up till now. Thank you for subscribing. Everything you guys do really helps me out. Thank you for the comments, the likes, everything. If you guys have any questions, if you guys want anything answered, please shoot me a comment uh, down below. I'm going to try to link everything I have in the description. Um, I'm also posting my scripts and stuff on Patreon and any information I found up there. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, feel free to go and subscribe to my Patreon. It starts out at just a dollar um, and then you get other benefits and stuff. It also helps me for my developing my game. So I'm solo developing a game and every dollar that I get through Patreon goes directly towards that. So. Yeah, thanks guys. You guys are uh, super appreciated. Thanks for helping out. Um, but yeah, let's get right to the video. I'm trying to make this a quick one, so I'm going to preface this by saying that this won't be 100% accurate. I'm not a lawyer. I am get as close as possible. I have friends who are lawyers. I consult with them about this case. They also play Dark and Darker. I research, do as much research as, as possible, but nothing is ever 100% accurate, no matter what anybody says. Um, you should always do your own research. But yeah, at the end of the day, these dates are decided by the judge with input from Nexon and Iron Mace. So there's nothing concrete anyway until we actually get the date. We don't know what that date is, right? There's no way to tell because we're not the judge. We haven't heard back. There's all kinds of extenuating circumstances. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've consulted with lawyers and other experts about this case. I am not a lawyer. Please do not take this as any kind of legal advice. And Thank you to everybody who's been nerding out with me over this case. You guys know who you are. Um, but yeah, let's get right in the timeline. So how long does everything take, right? That's kind of what we're here for. The easiest way to explain when things happen and how long everything takes is with a fairly simple infographic that I found at the Civil, uh, the Civil Law Self-Help Center. Civil Law Self-Help Center is a government-recognized legal aid organization that gives simplified advice on how to handle the court system how deadlines work, what the time frame, frames we're looking at. Uh, everything is subject to some amount of change based on state, district, or county. So keep that in mind. I will try to correct this in information when possible, um, but I am still looking into some of it. So before we get into things on that infographic, we need to know what some of the terms are, like what, especially what are days, using air quotes. Some things as simple as days have different meanings based on jurisdiction. Some districts use calendar days explicitly, so, you know, the 1st through the 30th is 30 days. They don't count, like, so holidays would count, be counted in that, everything would be counted in that. It's just as the calendar goes, you count those days, that's how it is. So it's directly as listed on the calendar. Some dr districts use court days, meaning days when the clerk is in session, so usually smaller counties that don't always have a full staff. Um, so whenever the clerk is in session, or they haven't updated to... Uh, like an automated clerk, like a digital clerk system yet. Uh, so if the clerk is in session, it, it constitutes as a court date. If the clerk isn't in session, then that you know they're not going to count it because you can't get a hold of them. So some of them don't count weekends and holidays um, until they can input incorrect information as necessary. Now Washington, Washington State. So this is Seattle. Um, they're a larger court and a larger district court, and they're very well funded. Um, so they use calendar days with a few exceptions to the best of my knowledge. Uh, they don't calculate the first day of the deadline or the last day if it falls on a Saturday. If the last day falls on a Saturday, it gets pushed towards the follow to the following Monday. Uh, they also have a difference where they allow 21 days for a person to get defendant to appear instead of 20 days for when they have to appear on their summons. So that's important going forward because that helps us adjust our timeline a little bit. Like super fast, they move pretty fast, right? So they're up on their game. They know what they're doing. Um, and with that said, let's get into this infographic because most of it's going to be pretty accurate to this infographic. So I'm going to open it up here because it's a little bit bigger. This is where I'm pulling it from, so the Civil Law Self-Help Center. Um, if you go down to map of the civil case tracks in district court so we're in a district court western district of washington uh, p is for plaintiff d is for defendant parties equals plaintiff and defendant 
So you start here. The plaintiff files a complaint. Uh, complaint. The plaintiff has summoned a complaint in service within 120 days after filing their complaint. So all this stuff is done. We are at this step right here. Right here. The plaintiff files proof of service in RCP4. We're in between that box and the box directly below that. So the defendant files an answer or other response within 20 days after service. So that's 21 days after service or 45 days for government agencies. Washington also has a stipulation that says if the person being served, so the defendant, in which case this is Iron Mace, if, the, if Iron Mace is located outside of the country, they can request an extension. They would push the early case conference back by an additional 30 days. So once the defendant files an answer, uh, so once they appear, which would be today or tomorrow, I should say 614, by end of business that day, so 614, 2023, uh, tomorrow as of the time I'm recording this, uh, they have to file their response and they could either ask for an extension or they could say, okay, we'll show up. What days do we, you want us there? Right. That's their appearance. They have to send in a letter basically saying they either want an extension or they want to show up whenever their agreed upon date is. So then you move down to the next boxes and this kind of lists what they are. The short trial program is basically stating that it's a smaller case uh, that's not being arbitrated and it's really quick, right? And then they have to go to, or you could go to cases below $50,000 that are non-exempt and they are arbitration mandatory. Um, but this one goes off to the left. So this one is exempt from arbitration. It's a case above $50,000 and other specific case types listed in NAR3. Um, so that we go down to, down to the left into these purple boxes. After we get the response by the end of day tomorrow, it should be filed, we go directly into this. So if tomorrow's the 14th, so starting on Thursday the 15th, they have 30 days to hold the early case conference. So they have to schedule this early case conference and hold the early case conference from the 30 days after service uh, of first answer filed. So that would be the first answer filed here. So they have to file their answer, we'll show up, okay, cool. They file their answer, and then boom, they have 30 days starting from the deadline of this day until they have to show up and have their early case conference. With that said, where are we as of right now? So as of right now, there's nothing preventing Iron Mace from developing, publishing, or releasing early access, or even a full release of the game. However, that doesn't mean early access is right around the corner. There are a lot of things to consider from financial and legal standpoints, but I'll get into that later. Uh, for now, we just kind of want to establish the timeline. As of the time I'm posting this video, Iron Mace has been served uh, with their notice to appear on 5-23-23 is when they were served, and we're waiting on them to respond to the summit. They have 21 days from the 23rd to respond, which puts us at the 14th of this month, according to Washington court days. Uh, this response will be either them scheduling scheduling the early case conference or asking for an extension uh, and it's due by 6 14 23 at 5 p.m pacific time so that's seattle time uh, it's all local case court time um, this is called the appearance they do not physically have to go into the court the jar the their lawyer can instead their lawyer can send in a response ask for an extension or video in to schedule an early schedule the early case conference it's important to note that this is not a pre-trial conference it's not an early case conference or anything like that there's no pre-trial hearings it's just them saying yo we'll, we'll show up or yo we want an extension we got the summons here's our response we're formally making an appearance like we're just gonna we'll be there right um or we want an extension. So if they do not ask, ask for an extension, the case moves forward as noted in the above image. Should they ask for an extension, the case will be pushed out for no more than 60 days from the day they responded. Um, so that would be an additional 30 days, right? Should as Versus should they not ask for an extension. On a date established by the court, no more than 30 days out of the response, uh, without an extension or 60 days with extension, they will hold the early case conference. So that's when they go into this box, parties hold early case conference. So, and then from there we move down to 
to the left, the purple boxes, like I said. Why uh, why do they move down? Because Nexon is asking for $900,000 worth of damages and the full rights to the IP of Dark and Darker, which is estimated to be worth tens to hundreds of millions of dollars, which is an absolutely massive amount of money. Should Nexon win the rights to Dark and Darker, it would be their largest US release ever. It's their biggest game, United States release ever of all time. Possibly their biggest game ever. So that's why they're it's going down into the left because this is a very serious case and it's worth a lot of money. And they don't arbitrate cases like this and it has to be seen by the judge. So once the case is filed, it has to be seen by the judge unless Iron Mace doesn't appear, in which case they lose automatically. But importantly, let's get into what is an early case conference. In simple terms, the early case conference is where they hold the pretrial hearings. A lot of us have already heard about pretrial hearings. Uh, the pretrial hearings establish if the case will continue or be dismissed. They establish the rules of the trial. Both parties put forward requests for injunctions, otherwise known as temporary restraining orders. I'm going to call them TROs from now on. Uh, there are a bunch of things they go over, one of which is establishing the dates and timelines for things like discovery. And they basically just outline, it's a bunch of like little mini trials almost that or hearings, you know, pre-trial hearings. So it's a little bunch of little mini hearings that could be anywhere from 15 minutes long to sometimes they'll be a little bit longer up to like an hour in extreme cases. Um, but there's a bunch of them and they just go, okay, well, this one's about, do you guys have any injunctions? If the, if nobody has any injunctions they want to put forward, boom, 15 minutes done 10 15 minutes that one's over okay what are, what are the scheduling of the, of the dates if everybody agrees on a date it only takes 15 minutes so it could but there's like 10 of these right so it could take anywhere from you know two two to three hours to eight hours it depends on how long and if they argue a lot right um but we won't know any of this information or these dates or in or the actual official timeline until the early case conference happens because that's when they're going to outline discovery and when the trial is and everything, right? They're going to, we're going to have a lot better picture of what that looks like when the early case conference happens. Um, until then, we don't really have any information until it's been accepted by the court. And when it does, they will post everything on Pacer and I'll know about it pretty much immediately. So what's preventing early access right now? Really nothing. The only thing actually preventing Iron Maze from releasing early access right now is Nexon's ability to send DMCA, DMCA takedown notices to anybody that I that Iron Mace works with. So, not anybody, but you know, oversimplification. Uh, this can, but this can include web hosts, server hosts, distributors like Steam or uh, Epic. So they can't post it on a distributor. Uh, they could have, they could DMCA. They could possibly DMCA Amazon Web Services to have their servers shut down. They could DMCA their website if they're that's where they're taking their money in. Um, it really depends. They could DMCA uh, internet service providers, all kinds of stuff. And that's just going to be a big, big pain in the ass for, for Iron Mace. Uh, so that's kind of why the early case conference is so important. Iron Mace and Nexon will both file TROs, the temporary restraining orders, against each other, right? So Nexon is going to ask Iron Mace to stop all Dark and Darker related activities. So no, no early access, no nothing. All bank accounts, everything frozen, right? That's what they want. That's what they've already asked for. According to their letter, they just haven't put forward their official notice yet because we're not in, we're not there yet. But they've already asked for it in their uh, complaints and stuff. Now Iron Mace has already alluded that they want. Next on to stop sending DMCA's and interfering with their business, right? So they're both going to have their own ask, right? So Nexon says, "Hey, we want you to stop doing dad," and Iron Mace is going to say, "Hey, we want you to stop bugging us," right? And then the judge is going to de decide to decline, modify, or approve each of these TROs in a pretrial hearing during the that early case conference. So if I am if Iron Mace gets their TRO approved and or modified, they can re then release EA early access without any interference from Nexon. Nexon has to stop interfering with their business. Iron Mace gets to move forward. And, sorry, my cat's meowing. Um, and Iron Mace gets to move forward. Hey, you're knocking stuff over. So 
yeah, the pretrial hearing will kind of decide what what happens, what that looks like. So if IM gets their TRO approved or modified, they can release early access without any interference from Nexon. However, the opposite is also true. If Nexon has their TRO approved in full, it could put a halt to all development and maintenance of all dark and darker re and all related products, right? So the coffee could get interfered with too because it says dark and darker on the box. It doesn't say Iron Mace, it says dark and darker specifically and uses stuff that's involved in the court case. So if Nexon's TRO is accepted, but modified, it might allow for Iron Mace to release early access, but with court oversight and, you know, that could be anything from their accounts being locked to, sorry, my cat knocked my fan over. Um, she's not having it. So if Nexon has their TRO approved in full, it could put a halt to all development and maintenance of Dark and Darker and all Dark and Darker related products. If their TRO is accepted but modified and it might allow for Iron Mace to release early access but with court oversight and their accounts locked until the case is over. It really depends on the judge and how they are feeling that day, what they think of the case or Iron Mace and what they think is equitable and fair really. So ultimately let's get to what we care about. What does this really mean for early access? So that's kind of tricky. Uh, and to be honest, nobody really knows. I don't really know. Uh, all I can kind of do is speculate and give my opinion, which this is what that is. This is a, you know, as most informed opinion as I could possibly make at this moment. So please take this as nothing more than that. It's, you know, my somewhat informed imp opinion. Please question it and do your own research. I want people to call out if I'm wrong. I want people to be smart about this, right? Because this is a legal case that's, you know, for hundreds, possibly hundreds of millions of dollars. So there's a lot on the line for, for Iron Mace and Nexon with this. And this is going to get really tricky and really muddy really fast. So please, 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 please don't just buy into whatever anybody says. With that said, my personal opinion is that I think Iron Mace is going to do one of two things. Both kind of depend on where they are financially and how risk averse they are, and everything kind of hinges hinges on a on whether or not Iron Mace, Iron Mace asks for an extension or not. And we should know that by the end of business day on six fourteen twenty three, or tomorrow as of making this video. So, why is that? What happens if there is an extension? In my opinion, if we don't see an extension by the end of business day on six fourteen twenty three. We won't see early access until sometime before uh, July 17th to July 19th, most likely early to mid-July, right? It could be pushed back to end of July, but we should probably still get early access. I'm hopeful for that. Uh, it just won't be until, or I should say early to late July. Uh, my reason for this is because it doesn't make really, it doesn't really make sense for Iron Mace to release early access. Uh, and accept people's money only to risk it being shut down less than 30 days later. Not only would they lose a lot of public trust, they might risk putting uh, customer funds on hold until the court case is over with. Uh, should Nexon's request for a TRO go through unmodified, they can have all dad-related activities shut down, including freezing their bank accounts. So it's just not worth risking. They could just wait it out for another 20 to 30 days and see what happens in the early case conference and then move forward from there, right? So no extension equals no e early access for about 20 to 30 days or around 7, 19, 23 to kind of be safe. Now, what happens if there's an extension? If Iron Mace needs money fast and is willing to put a uh, willing to risk pissing off the judge, they will most likely ask for an extension and put early access as soon as possible. It really depends on how much they need the money. So it really depends on their bankroll and how much risk they're willing to accept. So if they do ask for an extension, I could easily see them pushing out early access basically as soon as possible. If we see an extension on the books tomorrow, EAA might be coming out this weekend. We don't know. And it kind of makes it a little bit more unclear. And why do I think that? Uh, because it buys them time to settle accounts with lawyers, to set aside money to fund an account for refunds. It also puts the judge in a sh shitty situation of where they have to decide between allowing a company 
aka Iron Mace, to force their hand, or tens to hundreds of millions of dollars in customer funds away in a frozen account for up to three years, right? So that's how long the case could take if it drags on forever. So there could possibly be all of our money in this frozen account for up to three years, which would be super shitty, a super shitty situation to put the judge in, right? Um, if they freeze their accounts and everything with and do what next on ass. So it makes it somewhat less likely that an injunction will go through, but it risks making, making the judge super, super pissed off. Judges straight up hate when people, companies, or anybody does things that they know they shouldn't be doing while in the middle of a court case, even if it's technically legal, right? It's kind of a slap in the face to the authority of the, co of the court and the judge. They also hate feel, uh, feeling put in a situation where they have to make the shitty, the shitty decision that can potentially impact hundreds or thousands of people, uh, if not millions of people, especially when it comes to, you know, money, especially that much money. Again, why doesn't it really make sense? It also do doesn't really benefit Iron Mace much outside of the income and forcing the judge into that shitty situation. Dark and Darker has already been released via public playtest. The trade secrets Nexon are claiming are already out of the bag because Dad's been released. Um, the only major difference between early access and the public playtest is that Iron Mace will be charging for early access. Uh, this status quo Reddit lawyer speak um, has actually already been established, right? So, and it's not what a lot of people are arguing, at least in my opinion and the opinion of my friends who are, who are actually IP lawyers that have been in the business for like 20 years. So, uh, Dark and Darker has already been publicly released via playtests. It already has a publicly established, established early access timeline. It already has a publicly established full release timeline. It already has a financial responsibility to shareholders because they've accepted people's money from for investment. Uh, the only thing they haven't done is accept funds from public consumers. So the status quo is essentially that Dark and Darker is already released, but has not accepted public funds, right? It hasn't accepted payment from a con consumer standpoint and has limited access right now. So it's already out, but they haven't asked for any money and it has limited access. So what this does is it means that the, upholding the status quo during the pretrial phase of this it could possibly put both parties at, in, at risk for significant damages and undue stress, right? So simply put, IAM doesn't really have to worry about releasing EA to establish this status quo. Um, they've already done it. All this does is really give them money and piss off the judge. So if they're really, really hurting for money and they're willing to risk put, pissing off the judge, they'll probably rush out EA, especially if they get that extension. Now, let's get to pretty much what everybody's waiting for win game right everybody that's all anybody cares about when the hell is the game going to come out um my opinion is that unless the, they absolutely need the money they mo li most likely won't release early access before the early case conference unfortunately that puts us about 30 to 60 days away from being able to play the game depending on if i am gets an extension or not uh, they might get an extension and rush early access, as I said before, but that's only if they really need the money. But I don't see that as a likely outcome at this point. We're a day away, not even, like 30 minutes away from being the 14th, and they haven't filed for an extension yet, and tomorrow's the last day to do it. So, too long, didn't read. Uh, the game will probably come out shortly after the early case conference in 30 to 60 days, depending on if I am, I am gets an extension or not. And they have to get that extension by tomorrow, so 6-14-2023. Um, if they do, it could come out. If they do get the extension, it could come out sooner, but it might put their long-term case at risk. So it's not really wise. But yeah, I mean, that's basically it. This has already kind of went on for a little bit longer than I wanted it to. Um, I do have another more in-depth video coming out somewhat soon. I think that one's like 11 pages. This is 6 or seven um but yeah so that's it for this one thanks for watching uh don't forget to like subscribe join my discord and support me on patreon it really helps uh everything you guys do helps a ton i hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and i look forward to watching or playing dark and darker with the rest of you later